We'll see if this works. Oh, we have video. <laughs> let me know what you see and let me know if it's focused or it's blurry. What happened was the, we have this thing connected to two computers at the moment. Um, and one of them just randomly decided to restart. So my tech guy extraordinaire is a little bit worried about that, <laughs> but that's what happened. So I'm going to give a few moments for everybody to realize that there's another, uh, live feed starting and get started with this very, very soon. Um, my kiddos went upstairs to play, so we'll see if he comes back down. We'll get him in on the action when he does. <laughs> All right, guys. So we are going to do um, a standing llama this time. Ooh, the video for me is sharp and clear right now. I don't know why it doesn't scroll the comments for me, which is interesting. So um, if you're saying something and I don't see you, I apologize. <laughs> um, but I designed this llama so that the little ones could make a llama and the big ones could make a llama. And you guys could take this thing and, you know, take it to your own level. So that's what I'm hoping to do with all of my lessons is make it so that something the little ones can do, but also the big ones can do and up their skill level um, and enjoy it. So hopefully... Um, you guys had a chance to watch some of Peter Reynolds live readings. Um, this is one of the erasers that he gives, which I think is the coolest thing ever. You can see it. It says use sparingly. Your marks are beautiful. Um, so that's my eraser. Uh, okay. So this llama, let's get down to business. Um, <laughs> again, uh, you didn't miss anything from the last video. The last video was basically trying to get this thing to work and then the computer restarted and the whole thing went lit. So, um, nope, you didn't miss anything. All right, so this llama, we're going to use a series of shapes and a series of letters to make it. Uh, what we're gonna start out with is the letter P. So when you have your piece of paper, <laughs> these were drawn by my little guy, little rocks. He was kicking up rocks. Um, but when you're going to start your llama, you want to start with the long line for a P for the neck. I'll scooch my llama down a little bit because I see it's up in the drip by my name. And then when you are making the face of the llama, you can alter the front side of the pea a little more like a horse's head or a, a llama's head. Um, they're a little bit similar um, in profile view anyway. So what I did was I drew a pea lightly right here like this. And if you can see that line here, I'll go over it a little bit darker, right like that. I drew a P like that, and you could keep it like that. If you wanted to, that would be a perfectly acceptable shape for a llama head. And then you would put the other side of the llama neck coming down this way. Now, if you want to have a little bit more fancy of a llama head, you could actually take that P shape and you could give it a little bit of adjustment. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust that right now. So I'm going to take away that P and adjust it to make it more of like a horse-like shape or a llama-like shape. Um, if you are a llama person, I'm sorry. Uh, I only know a few facts about llamas and I think they're adorable. So if I am, you know, saying anything that is non-llama acceptable, like using horse head shapes and stuff, um, just let me know. So I gave a little curve right there to add to the nose. I'm going to add a little curve right here for the mouth. And then I'm going to give them a smile because this is a no drama llama. 
<laughs> and then I'm going to give a little curve right there for the bottom of the jaw. And the inside part of the jaw back here, I want to make a little curve as well. And I'm going to curve it up towards that little bottom lip. So that's how I'm making my llama face shape. Um, the next thing I want to do is make some llama ears. So those llama ears are kind of like curled A's. They've got curly sides, or curvy, sorry, curvy. They're not curly, they're curvy. So I'm gonna make the top of the A curve on one side, and then curve on the other side, or you could call it a triangle, but it doesn't have a bottom. So I'm gonna go with an A. And then I'm gonna make another one slightly down inside the head because that's the ear that's closer to you, so you wanna make it look closer. So we're gonna add a little space and make a curve side and then another curved side. And there we've got two llama ears. Um, and then this llama needs some fantastic hair. So we've got to add some fantastic hair. Uh, again, like yesterday, I'm just going to use wave-like shapes to put in that hair. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to hide that line like a ninja line. It's going to go oh, up like that, poof, disappear. And then it's going to reappear in front of the ear and go back and forth and back and forth and back like that. So now he's got some pretty awesome hair. And I have a little extra line right there from the P that I drew and I'm just gonna get rid of it. Now he needs an eyeball because llamas need to see. So I'm gonna make a circle right there. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and then I'm going to make two, well, a little circle up there at the top of the eye and an even tinier circle at the bottom of the eye. And then I colored it in with my pencil. You can color it in with a color. Uh oh, I hear the little ones. <laughs> we might have some guests appearing soon. Um, you can color it in with a pencil, a watercolor pencil. Um, you can color it in with your watercolors. I would prefer for me anyway, to color it in with something like this, like my pencil or, where's my colored pencils? I just have regular colored pencils. I'm gonna color it in with that. That way um, it doesn't bleed because if I use my watercolors and then I had water right there, then my llama's gonna look like it doesn't know how to put on its mascara <laughs> and it will have a flyaway eyeball. So I'm gonna grab regular color pencils, or you can grab your pencil or pen. Any of these work, anything you've got at home. Maybe you have a Sharpie, that works too. So I'm gonna use that and color in that part of his eye. Okay, now he's about the cutest llama I've ever seen. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm putting that back in my box so it doesn't get lost or mixed up. And the next thing I need to do is make my llama blanket. And you may say, why go with the blanket next? Because it's an easy way to start the body. So we're actually going to take our paper and we're going like this. And we're turning our llama facing us. And um, we're going to draw a backwards D. Now, if you get confused with that, you can do it this way. You don't have to face it that way. Let's go that way. For the little ones who get to confused, I'll show you this way, but it, you don't have to. You can stay the other way. So we're going to start with the side of a capital D. You can even curve it a little bit, give the llama back. And then we're going to go with the front of the D and make that curve. Oops, I just pressed too hard. <laughs> All right, I've got lots of backup pencils because I knew that would happen. All right, so <laughs> you're gonna do the front of the D, the capital D right there. That's our llama blanket. Now inside the llama blanket, you 
can put whatever you want. That llama could have a blanket with um, a wavy pattern, a dot pattern, anything you want on it. Uh, so I did, what I did was I put a stripe of a curvy line that matched the curve of the front of the D, just like that. And then I put a wavy line pattern that goes wave, 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 wave down to the bottom of the blanket, from the top to the bottom. I think you can hear my kiddos playing upstairs. <laughs> okay. So, go ahead and put your pattern in your blanket, however you want that pattern to be. Your llama can wear whatever. Now the next thing that I did is I put O's down at the bottom of the blanket, right here, O's. And I'm imagining my llama to be like one of those adorable llamas that you see um, because there are so many stuffed animal llamas that are so cute. Um, and they have these little like poof balls on the side of the blankets. And they have like little circles and then they might have little tassels coming off of it too. So you can make whatever you want. You don't have to put O's on there, but you can. Okay. So now we're going to turn our llama back this way. The next thing we're going to do is start with llama feet. So the llama feet, they're going to extend down from the neck. I'm curving in with a slight curve right there to give the front half of my little llama leg. And then kind of like I'm making an H on the other side or an A. Let's go back to A's. I'm gonna come in like I'm going at an angle, but I don't wanna touch the bottom because llamas have little flat parts on the bottom. So I'm gonna connect it like that. And then I'm going to make another one slightly behind. So I'm gonna make an angled line and another angled line so that my little llama looks like he's taking a walk. I think he's pretty happy. <laughs> And then I'm going to make a little belly, and that little belly is just a little smile right under the blanket. Uh-oh. <laughs> and then on the back, we need two more legs. So we've got an angled line, an angled line, and then this leg, it's not really moving. The back legs, this llama just started taking one step. Your llama might be moving more, but mine just started to walk. So I'm just gonna take one more angled line down and I'm gonna stop that foot just a little bit higher than this foot. This foot's gonna be just a little bit lower to make it look like there's some distance in between. I'm gonna get rid of those little lines. I hope your llamas are uh, working out. I hope you're having fun. Okay, so then see how the curved line of the D is like this right here? Well, we need the back side of our llama, so we're just going to reflect that same curve just like that to make the back side of the llama. Now, you can make a little llama tail however you want. If you want it soft and poofy, you can make it soft and poofy. If you want it to look like little waves like the top hair, you can. not that's what I did. I did a curved line. It points and points and goes back to the blanket like that. Now, um, my now three-year-old, um, <laughs> he just celebrated his birthday yesterday, um, decided that the llama was going to kick up some stones. So he drew me some stones back here. Um, so I'm just going to draw over top of them. You could add some little stones too if you wanted to, or this llama could be climbing a mountain. Um, the llama could be doing whatever you want him to do. He could be carrying something because remember how I said last time, look at that stone. He put little movement lines on here too. How cool is that? He wanted that rock to really look like he kicked it and flew. So, <laughs> um, but the the line, sorry, I got distracted. <laughs> My kiddo came down. Um, but now it's time to color. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to do a couple different things today. We can use our markers and our plastic. Remember, we grabbed a piece of plastic from the outside of the toilet room. <laughs> toilet paper uh, packaging. Um, you can also use plastic from grocery bags. Uh, you can use plastic from whatever you have around the house. Um, just grab whatever is around and it will all work. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to use the watercolor pencils first. We can also keep using those markers. If you want to keep using the markers in the water, go for it. Use that. This technique is just in case you have watercolor pencils. You might not, and that's perfectly okay. Okay, you might have color pencils, you might have watercolor, you might just have markers and water. It all works. It's okay. You might have crayons. That works too. Um, first thing, sorry, since I said the crayons, my white crayon is what I need today. I'm going to grab my white crayon and I'm actually going to try to keep these little round O's white. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take my white crayon. I'm kind of cleaning up my lines a little bit. Take my white crayon inside those O's and I'm going to color them with my white crayon. And it might look a little bit silly if you've never done this before because you might say that's they're invisible. Uh, white crayons are like ninjas. You don't see them, but they work. So we're going to stick that ninja crayon off to the side and we're going to grab our watercolor, hmm, our watercolor pencils. Okay, so my watercolor pencils are going to come into play right here on my llama's blanket. I'm going to take that. Oh, I'm just going to try to scroll down and see if anybody has any comments. Nope, we're good. Okay. And I'm going to draw over top of the patterns. Maybe make them a little thicker in spots. Draw over top of the pattern lines that I made on his blanket. You, if you have dots, you could draw over top of your dots. Whatever you have on your blanket, go ahead and take, if you have watercolor um, pencils, do it. If you have markers, here's the cool thing you can do with them. If you have markers, they work very similar um, in a way. You can use that marker and go over top of your lines as well. So I'm just going to do this. I'm going to go every other one. I'm going to go with a watercolor pencil and a marker. Go ahead and fill yours in. Now I'm skipping one so that I have a pattern going on with my colors. fun game you can play. I know my art students do this. When they're in kindergarten and we're learning about how to cut lines, we take a piece of paper and we draw curvy lines and zigzag lines and we draw straight lines and we draw, oh, is it back? <gasps> I'm back. Okay. And we draw dotted lines or I call them ninja lines because the lines come in and they disappear. And they come in and they disappear and they come in and they disappear. Um, and then what I have them do is if they need to have scissor cutting practice, then they use their, I think my video is paused. Hopefully it comes back. We'll see. I'm going to check the other computer to make sure it didn't go to sleep. Oh, we're good. We're good. We're good. Hopefully. Okay, so um, I'm going to keep going and hopefully it, it's still going. But we take our scissors and to do scissor cutting practice, we pretend that we are in a slow race. So our scissors cut up the piece of paper on the racetrack that we drew and they go 
And I teach them that their hand is like a hand on a steering wheel. And it turns that paper to guide the racetrack through those scissors back and forth. Or we go chomp and then turn it, chomp, chomp, chomp. So however you want to do it at home, if your kiddo needs scissor cutting practice, that's a great way to do it. Um, so check it out. Try that. Okay. Um, my video is still paused. Can you guys send me a message and let me know if your video is still working? I would appreciate that very much so. Okay, so I am taking my water now. And if I have a watercolor pencil there, I'm just gonna take that, add some water to it, and you'll notice that it will start pulling that color right out. And I could use the water and bring some of that color right out. So I have a light section and I have my beautiful line. Now I'm going to go wipe. Again, don't tap, but wipe. Yay, thank you. <laughs> thank you for messaging me. Um, I'm not tapping. I'm going to do it because nobody is in front of me. I'm not doing that because that's going to send water everywhere um, and it's going to get all over other people's stuff and that's no fun so I want to take that water and I want to go over top of those lines and what that's doing is it's waking up the watercolor wake up watercolor wake up so I always tell the kids when we're using wa watercolor when we go over top of the watercolor with water we're waking it up wake up watercolor <laughs> All right, so we're waking it up and we're pulling it over just by brushing, brushing in circles. I'm brushing in little circles to bring it out, but if they're brushing in long strokes like that, it's okay, that works too. Um, it all works. All right, wipe, 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 a little more. <laughs> and then back over top of that line, one more time, actually two more times, I've got another one. And then I'm going to go in circles and pull that watercolor out. Your little one might already be moving on to the rest of the llama. Go for it. It's okay. Um, you don't have to stop them and tell them to wait. They don't have to be patient and wait till I'm moving on to the next part. If they're super excited about painting another part of the llama, no drama llama. Let them go. It's okay. All right, so the next part is the marker. We do have marker on there. Um, and that marker, whoop, I forgot a line of marker. If I, if I had put blue there and I mixed it with the, what is this one? Magenta. If I mixed it with my magenta watercolor, then I would have had more of a purple one when they combined. Oh, come on, come back live video. I'm just gonna keep on going. All right, so uh, it works just like, just like the watercolor pencils. You just paint over it with water, boom, it pulls out the color, and you have your own watercolors just by adding water to those markers. It's fantastic. I love Crayola markers. And I'm not even paid to say that <laughs> yet. No, I doubt they would pay me to say that, but <laughs> um, they do. They work fantastic as a, a watercolor alternative. Um, so I'm just adding water and I'm bringing it in. And then um, the llama, you can decide how you want to do around his body, um, even if you've got watercolors. So let's talk a little bit about watercolors. If you have a pan of watercolors like this, that you can see, um, mine are not the most perfect watercolors either. Everybody in my house uses them, including my three-year-old. So um, my watercolors get a bit mixed up, um, which, it's okay. If you want to clean watercolors, this is how you do it. Get your water, wipe, 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 and then 
you have to wake up your color. So you brush over top of your watercolor, wake it up. I'm going to add a little bit more water with a wipe like that. Give it a second to wake up, clean out my brush, look for another one. Ooh, I tapped that. <laughs> I tapped the edge of the cup. Um, and then I'm just going to wipe, 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 wake up the yellow, wake up yellow, wake it up all over where it's dirty. There we go. Not dirty. It's just other colors. It's okay. Someone was getting creative and mixing a lot of colors and that's all right. So once it, it woke up, then I'm going to take and brush over top of it. Give it a little bit more. We'll wake up, clean out my brush. Here's where it gets to be a little different. I take my paper towel and I dry off my brush and then it works like a vacuum cleaner. My dry, this one has quite a bit of blue kind of shoved down in there. So I'm not sure how clean this will get, but it works like a vacuum cleaner and it will suck out that color out of the white. So I can do that and clean out that white. Didn't realize how much blue was lurking underneath the surface there. So I just add a little more water, wipe, 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 use my brush like a vacuum cleaner to clean it up. Now, if yours is a little less mixed up, you should see better results when it sucks up the extra color. Wipe, wipe, wipe. That yellow needs to wake up a little bit more, I think, before I can really clean it up. Okay, so what I want to use for the blanket actually is the light blue. So it's not any of those colors, but the light blue is clean. And I wanted to show you how to clean up your color. Um, so I'm going to just get some water, wipe, and wake up that light blue by just brushing on. Never, never, never dig your brush down into the watercolor. If your kiddo is shoving that brush in and going back and forth, those poor brushes are crying um, and the bristles are breaking. So we've got to take care of our brush. I, I always call our brushes Will Ferrell. So Will, we have to take care of. This is his ferrule. This is his handle. These are his bristles or his hair. Um, when we're using acrylic or tempera, we never get paint on his ferrule, only on the tips of his hair. Uh, and we try very hard to never damage his hair. We always want to give him troll hair. Point it straight up. Okay. <laughs> so we want that troll hair to be pointed and high. Unless it's a flatter brush and then you give it whatever hair color or hair shape it has. They like their hair a very specific way. So go ahead and give your brush whatever hair color, or hair, I said, uh, whatever, whatever, I can't paint and talk, I guess, hair design it likes. So I'm going to use just a little bit. See, I didn't have to add a lot of water to wake up my blue. I just added a little bit, just a little bit of water. And then I'm gently taking my brush around the curvy line and it's okay if it gets in and it crosses the line. No one's going to be sad if you go outside the line. Maybe you will, but it's okay because mistakes like mistakes lend themselves to new possibilities. So once I kind of let go of trying to be perfect and get the perfect line all the time, the perfect shape all the time, I still do it sometimes. But once I let go and I just learn to have fun and be okay and adapt to any little type of maybe it went in the line a little bit there and over here, and then I learned, oh wow, when it mixes right there, that looks beautiful. So maybe I like it and I'll leave it that way. I like it. Again, with this llama, it's no drama llama and your no drama llama can be any color you want it to be. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to use a variety of my tools to color my No Drama Llama and you can color with me. I'm going to work on the body now. Um, if you're still here and you can still see me, what color should my No Drama Llama be? Can you send me a message and let me know? I think my video is about 20 seconds behind, so I'm going to move my supplies a little bit out of the frame. We'll move those over here. Anybody have a good idea for my llama color? going to go with purple and I'm going to go with this for this way. So I'm going to use my marker and I'm going to go over top of the area that has the wax or crayon. Crayon is wax. It's wax based. And when you go over top of those areas with the crayon, it should resist and then you'll have a beautiful white spot left. So if you want anything to remain white, go ahead and take your crayon now and go over top of it so that it stays white. You could even do that with your eye if you wanted that eye to remain black and you didn't have a pencil or a marker. You could have even used a crayon. So I'm kind of lightening the marker right there by just adding water on top of the marker that was already there and just pulling it lighter, shading it. Um, so I have a bit of a shadow on the back of the leg. Go ahead and paint your no drama llamas however you want. Even change the color of the llama halfway across its neck if you wanted to be purple llama. Maybe it was half purple, maybe it was half purple and half pink. Whatever you want your llama to look like. It's your llama. I'm going to add a little bit more of the, a little bit of water, a whole lot of marker right there for a shadow. I think that the video is still going. Looks like Yay! You miss that again. Okay. <laughs> I haven't seen any comments for a while, but it tends to do that. It lags the comments, and uh, maybe everybody's just having a good time painting. I hope so. Painting their llamas. On my phone? Well, on the, your preview there. Yeah, on the preview it looks frozen, so I'm not sure. Last time though, they said um, I, they said that it was still going, so I'm, I'm just going to keep painting. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Music. You gonna stay and be in the llama? No, I gotta <laughs> check my boys. Okay. I'm surprised no one didn't come back down to to make the llama. 
Okay. So again, if you want a shadow, if you want a darker area, um, with your marker, just get less, just like you do with watercolor, less water, more of the pigment. In this case, it's marker. If you want it lighter, more water, less pigment, or just straight water on top of the pigment and pool. I just go around in circles, kind of back and forth motions around in circles to get the pigment to brush away and pull forward. So I apologize if I am missing comments from you. I don't see any. <laughs> it's been a while since I saw any comments, so. I'll come with those tablet and see. Okay. All right. We're troubleshooting still to make sure. Oh, ooh, I think I saw a comment. Give me a second. Good here. Yay, thank you. All right. It's so different than whenever I'm teaching because if you have one of my students at your home painting with me right now, they will tell you that when we're painting in class, sometimes we have long breaks where we just paint and it's quiet, but most of the time when we're painting, the kids are excited and chattering and talking to one another about what they've been doing all day. Maybe, you know, they're just talking about nothing they're just talking <laughs> um and so i'm used to all of that background chatter going on while i'm working um and i'm also used to telling them you know like one two three eyes on me whenever i need them to get give me their attention so it's interesting not not having to um do that right now and not have any noise except for the water from my fish tank <laughs> so, all right, I have a beautiful purple llama. I think he's pretty cool. I can't wait to see your llamas. Definitely post them. I was loving, loving the llamas from last time. They were fantastic. You guys did a great job. Uh oh. <laughs> Try to get the little one to settle down and just take a break, and he doesn't want to. Should just bring him down here and let him paint. He'll paint later with me. But he was getting grouchy, and you know, if you're a parent, when they get grouchy, they need to rest a little bit. So, I'm going to go over top of this tail with less water, more marker, to give it a little bit more of a furry-like look, like some hair, or in their case, wool. So fun fact about llamas, I don't think I told you this one, llamas can run 35 miles per hour. That's pretty fast. And they only spit when they're agitated. So if a llama spits at you, you should probably rethink what you're doing. <laughs> so that's why llamas spit, if they are agitated. They're basically a llama's way of saying, check yourself before you wreck yourself. <laughs> okay, so these little rocks down here, I'm going to make them gray. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I showed my kiddos to make gray whenever we did koalas. We did koalas um, and we used the black. So I have to wake up the black. Wake up black. So we woke up the black 
And then we had some on our brush. And we used that to just put it on top on the other side of the plastic. Now, if you don't have a top to yours because it got lost somewhere, I'm touching my face. We're not supposed to touch our faces. Um, <laughs> if you lost the top to your watercolors, your plastic, mm, excuse me, oh, I touched my face. <laughs> your plastic comes in handy here. So you can add more water. I'm, I'm just gonna touch my face. Um, more water, less watercolor pigment, less pigment, more water. And then that should give you a nice light version, a nice gray. So our llama can kick up little gray stones. I don't know what happened, but it is kicking stones. <laughs> And then I'm going to add some just black. Again, I'm not smashing my brush into the color. I'm wipe, wipe, wiping it. I'm going to add just black on the bottom like this of my stone. See how it kind of like goes what up in there and it doesn't look too nice. Here's how we're going to make it look nice. I'm going to clean out my brush, wipe, wipe, wipe. And then I'm just going to take the edge of that black and I'm going to blend it towards the gray so it can blend out like it's a shadow. So we're going to blend that shadow out just like that. Boom, we have shadow. So now we've got a shadow, it looks cool. Um, we've got a llama. Our llama could have a little shadow too on the ground. We'll just put a little shadow. Little shadowy llama. We're just gonna take that and go like that. I'm going to build the llama shadow underneath there. Use our gray. And just kind of add a little bit of a llama-like shadow. I'm going to give a shadow up here for the head. That way. There we go. And now our llama is no longer floating. He's kind of on the ground. Now, you guys could take this and you can put whatever you want on the background. You could even add a little bit more to his nose if you want to darken it up. I think it's okay the way it is. Um, you could add other things to it, but your llama can become whatever you want it to be. You can put stuff on its back because as we learned, llamas can carry 30% of their own body weight. So you can load it up with cheeseburgers if you want. Um, <laughs> I don't know why they would carry cheeseburgers, but maybe they're kind of, maybe they're hungry. <laughs> um, <laughs> maybe that's how they get their food delivered on the back of llamas. Um, <laughs> there's seven million of them in Peru, so um, they deliver all kinds of things. Maybe cheeseburgers are part of that. I doubt it, but. I think they're used for something else. Anyway, uh, thanks for painting with me, and I'm going to end this video here, and I hope that you guys send, oh, well, post your pictures, and I can't wait to see your llamas. Um, I hope you had fun. I hope you had fun with your little ones if you're painting with them. I can't wait to paint with my little ones and see what they do with their llamas. Um, and I can't wait to get another llama video out. I have another one over there. Oh, oh, I wanted to show you the salt effect. We're going to do it. I did say I was going to use salt. Um, okay, we're going to put a bush right here. Our little llama is going to eat something. It's on this little bush. All right. I almost forgot. So my little bush, I'm just going to make it like wavy like this. Why not? Okay. And then I'm just going to take and use my, I honestly like the markers in the water more than I like the watercolor. How funny is that? So I'm going to brush, 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 wake up green, wake up, take care of my green. And I'm just going to go over the green edges like I'm drawing the edge of that bush again, like that, like so. 
And then I can, your bush can be any color you want it to be. So maybe your llama is eating, um, I don't know, from an orange bush full of oranges. Um, <laughs> I don't know, whatever you want. This is your llama. Okay, so we're gonna go around that edge. Woo, like we're drawing it again. And then we go right inside and we fill it up with some water. Not a lot, just a little bit. And we just go around and around and fill it up. So go ahead, let them get crazy with their color. Let them go ahead and rush. Now, if they want to do this technique, hold on, let me show you. Give me one second. I'm going to finish what I did there. If they want to paint first with water, paint first with water, just plain water, poof, invisible color. <laughs> there is no color there yet. But if they want to paint, oh, um, if they want to paint first, that is something completely different that popped up there, with water, and then they want to grab their color, watch this. If you put your color in there, it looks completely different. It's a neat little technique. It's called wet on wet. We did it before. And the water kind of slides around a little bit more easily that way. Or the pigment, I'm sorry. The pigment slides around a little bit more easily. A little easier than it did before. So we're going to keep adding that. I'm going to add more green, less water as I get this going down at the bottom. More green, less water. They're having a blast up there. Oop, I missed that spot with water. That's okay. I want it to look darker towards the bottom. <laughs> and then I'm just blending it up in. Close, close these things, things because they're, they're hiding my comments. Okay. So, so now I have, have a bush, bush and maybe I want a little brown because now it looks like the bush is floating and I'm just, just going to add a little brown line. Whoop, like, like that. Boop. There you go. There's a little brown line. Um, and, and then, then I'm going to add something special here. So I used a bit of water, and I'm actually going to make sure everything has some water on it, on the bush. Make sure it all has water. Yours probably already does. Then here's where we're going to use the salt. So I have my salt from my kitchen. <laughs> so uh, my kitchen things, it just shows pizza sauce on it, I see. Um, my, my kitchen things, things become art supplies quite often. And I'm just going to shake a little bit of salt onto that bush. And for those of you that might be uh, superstitious, we're just going to toss some over our shoulder. I don't know if that actually does anything, but we're going to do it. Maybe it'll bring this thing, this uh, craziness to an end. <laughs> just kidding. Um, we're going to have fun. So, that's going to dry, and when it dries, it's going to have these cool little things, little, like, bursts on top of the color. You can even add a little darker color up in here where the color is a little bit darker. It might even work better. If you want to maybe maybe add another little bush over here and try, oh my goodness, I don't know what they're playing up there, but it's crazy. I don't, I don't know, know what's, what's going, going on upstairs, upstairs, but they're having a... Uh-oh. I might end to find out my little guy. My husband's up there, so it should be okay. Oh, no, he didn't get a toy he wanted. I'm going to add two little tiny bushes right over here. One in front of that line and one behind. And then I'm going to actually make it like a ninja. <coughs> Excuse me. Because it's going to go behind this rock. 
my, my poor puppy. My poor puppy has cold too. too. Most, Most of us here have allergies going on. <laughs> okay, so, so we've got, got that bush, that bush, and that one. one. I'm, I'm going to sprinkle salt on all of them. And, and then, then later on, on I'll take a picture and I'll show you guys what's happening. But for right now, you should be able to see some cool things happening with these. All right, um, this was long again, I'm sorry. Um, but I hope that you could either you know, stop and, and go again if it's too long, um, or take it to the next level and uh, show me what you did. So please take pictures. Um, please take pictures and show me your llamas.